There's two things we want. We want better and we want more. The, the argument for better is in Surah Al-Adiyat. The argument for more is in Surah Al-Takathur from Kathra. Those are the two things that drive humanity. We want better. You want a better life. You want a better house. You want a better car. You want better clothes. You want a better phone. You want a better, 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 better. You, all, any, everything has to be better. And even if you have it, you want something more. So it's quality and what? Quantity. Those two things are constantly obsessing. If you have everything, you want more money now. Because I might want something better later. <laughs> right? So, and if I want something better, I need more money. So it's either quantity or quality. Or quantity or quality. If I had more money, I'd have a better quality car, a better quality house, better quality clothes, better quality travel, better quality vacation. That's what these two things are. They bounce off of each other. Now, those two things, we feel if we had those two things, we'd be successful. We'd actually be successful. And the more we're getting, the more successful we are. Someone who has a higher salary is considered more successful than someone who has a lesser salary. The one who has a higher education and more degrees is more successful than someone who has less degrees. The someone who has a better quality life, better quality materials around them, you know, better quality of, of, you know, social circle is considered more successful than the one who doesn't. And Surah Al-Asr comes along and reverse engineers all of it and says, actually, all of this is just loss. No, all of this, your time's running out and you're running after things that are nothing but loss. Inna linsana la fi It's just, for, first Allah commented on how obsessed you are with more and better. And then he basically said, and more and better, the way you think of them, is nothing but failure. It has nothing to do with success. This surah redefines success and failure. And this is actually why this is the Qur'an's worldview encapsulated. Look, everybody sees the sun, everybody sees the moon, everybody sees the stars, everybody sees the sky. Human beings, whether they believe or not, see the same sky, we breathe the same air, we look at the same ocean, our views are the same. It's not like the kafir sees a different sun, they see the same sun. Similarly, we define things in the same way in the world. The team that won the championship is a winner, the team that lost the championship is a loser. So we define success and failure the same way. The, ones who, the one who won the election is a success, the one who lost the election is a failure. The one who graduated is a success. The one who got kicked out of school is a failure. This is, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim or not. You're going to think of success and failure in the same way. What does this surah do? It takes something so basic, like the definition of success and failure. And it puts a new Quran lens on it. And after you put this lens on, and I put this lens on, my definition of success and failure fundamentally differs from every other human being. It doesn't matter what, other, what religion they are, and what lifestyle they have, and whether they're even from my same family, they could even be a fellow Muslim. The fellow Muslim who sees the world through Surah Al-Asr, and the fellow Muslim who doesn't see the world through Surah Al-Asr, see two different things. They see two very different things. I would like here, just at this point, to give you an example of that before we go any further. You know, if you think of somebody homeless, you don't think of somebody successful. Homelessness is an easy example of someone who's not successful. If you think of somebody deported from the country, you don't think of somebody successful. That's, that's pretty humiliating and an unsuccessful state to be. We wouldn't want to be in that state. When you think of poverty, you don't think of success. But if you look at some of the most successful human beings in history, when we think about Ibrahim alayhi salam being made homeless because he was kicked out of his house, when we think of him as someone who's wandering the desert and going from town to town, not having any assets to his name, when we think of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam being expelled from Mecca, deported essentially, when we think of him living out of a cave for a good year, 
when we think of the bankruptcy of the companions, whether even the Messenger himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, tying stones to his belly. Anybody else starving? Anybody else? You walk down the street and somebody doesn't have a home. The picture in your mind is not success. Anybody else who's been kicked out of their home, you don't think of success. As a matter of fact, even about a previous prophet, people said, "Kunta fina marjuwan." We used to have so much hopes in you. You had a bright future. What have you done with your future? You've become such a failure. They said to a prophet. <laughs> you see? Because their definition of success still holds. And according to their definition, this is a huge failure. You'll find people in your own family, among your circle of friends. Maybe you're not that religious. Maybe you, you, know, you, you, you don't pray five times, or you don't know much about Islam, or you don't dress so Islamically, or whatever it may be. And you start maybe even learning a little bit about Islam. Or just showing a little bit of curiosity about Islam. And people around you start thinking you're failing in life. You're, you're, you're not cool anymore. You've lost out on something. You've become weird. You're not as acceptable as you once were. There's some sort of a loss associated with coming close to Islam, even if a little bit. Even if, and the more they see you as serious about the religion, the more of a loser you are. The more of a loser you are. And that's the story of human history. The Prophet would tell us himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا فَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَ Islam began as something weird, something strange. People said, what do you mean this is success? What we've been doing is all failure and what you've come with is success? Come on! This is, this is what you mean? This is how you want us to live our life? And Allah says one day, it, the Prophet says one day it will come back as something strange. In other words, when Islam first came, people of Makkah thought it was strange. It was weird. What are you talking about? But once Islam became a global power, it was the popular thing. It was the cool thing to be Muslim, actually at one point, when the Muslims were in power. But now we find ourselves at a time where even within a Muslim family, somebody going back towards Islam is becoming what again? The strange one, the weird one. It's associated with some kind of loss. In many countries in the Muslim world, people are afraid that their young, young sons and daughters might become religious, because if they do, that means they won't get good jobs, they won't have good careers, they won't get a good education, they'll become fanatics, they'll become crazy. All these fears are there that they will lose out on life if they get close to Islam. And though in some, at some level, I sympathize with that fear, because there's a lot of fanaticism out there. There is. But to take all of Islam and say, if you become anywhere close to this deen, if I see you praying five times, or if you start, if I start noticing that you're not wearing the tight clothes that you once wore, and that's not a good thing. You're becoming too extreme, you're too hard on yourself. And you start seeing that you're missing out on life, or you're in a state of loss, then your definition of loss and failure is not based on Surah Al-Azr yet. That world view hasn't been established. You see, Islam today has become a label, we carry the name, we carry Muslim names, we celebrate Eid, we show up for Jummah, we do certain rituals, like the Christians do their rituals, and the Jews do their rituals, they have their Sabbath, they have their Sunday, we have our Friday, we, we eat the halal food, and we're good. Bas basically, Islam's become just a few things that we do, but practically, the way we see life, the way we view the world, has not changed at all, From is not different from anybody else. They have certain definitions of success and failure, and ours are identical. We consider the same, the very same thing, success and failure, as our non-Muslim colleagues, as our Christian, Jewish, atheist, Hindu, Buddhist, agnost friends. They have that same view, we have that same view. We haven't actually seen the world any differently. Islam has been reduced to certain rituals, not a way of seeing the world. The Qur'an first came to change the way we see the world. Everything else is secondary. The primary is the way you see the world changes. That's the point of Surah Al-Asr. Its function is to make you see the world from the Qur'an's lens.